My freshman year of college was perfect. I went from the overachieving, nerdy high school athlete who'd never been drunk, fucked, or loved to a pot-loving, molly-dropping, dick-sucking, political science major-ass bitch. I finally let go and tried being an idiot on for size, and it was a suit that fit. It was roomy and full of zero expectations for my actualized self. I met some of my best friends in life living like this, smoking weed-spiked hookah at the top of Beagle Hall and under the plastic Ralph's bag covering the smoke alarm. We didn't just party together. We had a genuine girl gang going on as we all tried to figure out what it meant to be strong women in a fucked up world. We suffered through GEs together. We defaced paintings of chancellors during protests together. We stopped dating basic dudes who couldn't get on the dismantling the patriarchy train together. <laughs> we were Punjabi, Russian, Mexican, Jewish, Pakistani, all testing the limits of our previous identities, deciding for ourselves who we wanted to be. We also did drugs together. <laughs> Acid, molly, salvia, weed, shrooms, giant hits of pure tobacco from tiny pipes for some reason. <laughs> and Adderall. So much Adderall. You had to take it to cram everything into the ice cream scoop holes, our dare officer said, the drugs took out of our brains. <laughs> The fact that us bright-eyed miscreants were roomed together at a school with the nickname UC Socially Dead was a miracle. On move-in day of sophomore year, we couldn't wait to build the debaucherous sequel to our first dorm. There was just one problem, Carrie. The school had placed Carrie in our suite. We hadn't asked for her. We weren't stoked. Sorry, Kara, you unfortunately missed out on the unbreakable bonds we made through drugs and alcohol. Try being an adult next time. <laughs> we stepped into the dorm and Carrie emerged, a giant cloud of weed smoke in the waves of Tame Impala pushing out into the common area. What an entrance. Oh, well, guys, I am like so sorry, she said like the chick from Uncaught Joms. She looked like she was sponsored by Abercrombie and Fitch and Cheech and Chong. Uh, no dude, this is dope. You trying to smoke some more, we said? A huge grin flashed across her face as she about faced back towards the weed shire from whence she came. Her preppy hips bumping from side to side. We all got in line and scurried into her room like ducklings and started taking hits from her three foot bong. Dude, we were like so worried you were gonna be lame. She pulled a snowy tray out from under her bed, adorned in permanently two $20 bills and passed it around. Bomp anyone? I hated Coke, but had no issue being around it, especially at 11 a.m. on a Sunday. <laughs> Knowing that the normies were spending this time on benches, listening to some robed man tell you why God is better than you. So I sat there, pleased, watching my other friends break bread. And like, if you guys ever need anything, she opened the closet door like a sketchy man's trench coat <laughs> and revealed the most drugs I have ever seen in my life. Court-sized Ziploc bags filled with ecstasy, year supply pill bottles filled with cocaine, shrooms on shrooms on shrooms, and of course, a trash bag full of weed. A trash bag. <laughs> We sat there for a second acting like we've been there before, but we hadn't. We definitely hadn't. Something about that quantity registered in all of us, and we knew it was sketchy to have around. There was at least $5,000 worth of shit in there, but we were stupid. And we were excited, so we all said, fuck yeah. <laughs> and effectively became participants in a crime ring right then and there. <laughs> You can like totally tell your friends too, it's no worries. Uh, yeah, obviously we're all thinking, everyone knows you get at least three times cooler for knowing a drug dealer, I'm telling everybody that shit. <laughs> Actually, here, you all should just take down my other number. I call it the shady line. Oh. <laughs> she arfed. So we took her number down and started telling our friends as we reaped in the discounts and street cred of being her minions with no referral pay structure and all the liability. <laughs> like the dirty little noobs we were. 
What we didn't foresee was the real if you give a mouse a cookie situation we'd gotten into. <laughs> what started as the acceptance of her lifestyle turned into an invitation to start running a felony level drug operation out of our highly visible on campus apartment. <laughs> then things got scary. We stepped into our apartment one day to find an older seedy man who stank of whiskey and cigarettes and looked of whiskey and cigarettes because he was holding whiskey and cigarettes. <laughs> He was on his way out after doing a deal. As he lifted his arm to wave, his shirt went with it, revealing the textured grip of a Glock tucked into his pants. Thanks for the drugs, he shouted into the stone hallways. He literally said, thanks for the drugs. <laughs> the only person stupid enough to say some shit like that is someone actively on drugs. Horrified, we all brought our jaws up and rushed inside. Who was that, dude? What the hell was that? A complete stranger? He had a fucking gun. No, dude, not cool. We told her that she'd lost her drug dealing privileges. <laughs> Shit had gone too far. Sorry, guys. Yeah, that guy is weird. He's like obsessed with me. Cool, don't care. Please stop dealing drugs. Our reign of being posers was over. We weren't hard. We wanted to get straight A's and get high sometimes without our RA ever knowing. We were still just suck-ups planning on sucking society's asshole all the way to the top. And a felony was not part of the ass-sucking. <laughs> Guys, I have a lot of stuff I have to move. I can't just stop. Uh, that's like not our problem, dude. Stop dealing drugs out of this apartment. Whatever, she said as her slippers dragged herself into her gulagish drug prison. <laughs> we headed to our dorms, the unfamiliar sound of our doors locking filling the air for the first time ever since we'd lived together. The next morning, we woke up and immediately told our closest friends who'd been hanging out with Carrie that things were starting to spiral. Carrie is super sketchy, dude. Be careful. It's starting to freak us out. Oh, it's starting to freak you out, my ex-boyfriend Daniel said, who was regrettably still a close, awkward part of our friend group. <laughs> it's fine, he said. Do you know how much drugs you'd have to be doing to actually be on a cop's radar? Unless someone tips him off, we're all good, my man. <laughs> he slapped my arm with his stoner laugh in a disregard for the concept of anything bad ever happening to his rich ass. I saw his point though, as long as we kept stuff under wraps and nobody tipped anyone off, we'd probably be fine. But then we got a message from another person who lived in our building. Have you guys seen this giant message someone wrote on your wall? What is that? We rushed home to see that Carrie in giant bright yellow chalk had written the words, the shady line <laughs> and the full number to her drug dealing phone below it. It's on our living room wall. Don't text that number. Or do. <laughs> you could see it perfectly from the outside hallway because of the giant hallways for <laughs> giant windows for walls, some avant garde Beetlejuice ass designer put there. We all stormed up to Carrie's room. What the fuck is that? I said, pointing to the wall. We're done, dude. We told you to stop. You haven't. We have to tell someone. Carrie acknowledged our rage with a pitiful laugh. Good luck. You guys have bought like so much for me. She was right. If we went down, we were going with her. To make stakes even higher, we were hanging on by a thread with our resident dean too, thanks to an incident at the end of our freshman year that landed us on probation. Apparently, you're not allowed to smoke weed and try to lie and say it was weed-scented incense because apparently incense is also not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Equal punishment, makes no sense, dumb. Uh, we decided to give Carrie one more chance, but if she fucked up again, that would be the last Coke straw. <laughs> On the way back to our dorm from the dining hall later that day, we heard the sounds of a fire alarm blasting through the air. I swear to God, if she just burned down all our shit. Oh well, at least the drugs would be gone too, I guess. We waited for a few minutes before being told that someone, Carrie, had just been smoking too much weed. We clambered up the stairs and burst through the door, ready to yell at her like angry Kramers. So let me get this straight. You're dealing a felony amount of drugs out of this apartment. 
You're bringing guns into our place. You're openly marketing the fact that you're a drug dealer on our walls. And now you're smoking so fat, you're causing the entire building to evacuate. What the hell is wrong with you? Priya emerged from her room. Having noticed that her once closed door was ajar, she checked that everything was still in its place, only to find that Carrie had planted all her drugs in Priya's closet. She figured campus security would do an inspection after the fire alarm, so she fucking framed Priya with all of her drugs, all of them, the pills, the X, the coke, the weed, the shrooms, everything. Priya stomped towards Carrie. <laughs> oh, hell no, bitch. Priya, the only person in our group who'd ever been in a fight before in her life, launched at Carrie, and we found ourselves in the middle of a Jerry Springer plot, but with no ceremonious security guards or hopes of being a father. We were just a bunch of noodle arms who were in <laughs> way over our heads. And we're also still high because no, we did not stop doing drugs during this whole period. Uh, <laughs> After the biggest adrenaline rush I'd had in my short sheltered life, we finally grabbed hold of Priya's arms as she spit at Carrie's feet. Carrie, just out of reach, sat with her arms crossed, pleased that we were doing her bidding for her once again, holding Priya back from kicking the absolute shit out of her. You know the resident dean, like, loves me, don't you? Carrie said like a total fucking bitch. <laughs> She's gonna love hearing about this. Uh, love hearing about how you're a drug dealing psychopath? She won't believe you, Carrie said, like a total fucking bitch. <laughs> you're the ones who are all on probation. Fuck if I care anymore, dude, I'm ratting your ass out. We all turned and stormed down to the res dean's office. We need to talk to you now, we said. <sighs> is it an emergency? She said, um, yes. Is anyone in danger? Honestly, maybe. <sighs> okay, what is it? I began by explicitly throwing myself under the bus. Okay, so like, let's just say that we knew someone who was dealing drugs out of our apartment, and we were scared and wanted to tell someone, but we also bought a lot of drugs from this person. <laughs> Priya smacked my side. Hypothetically. And now, we're wanting to know if we can leave a tip anonymously and not have to be involved in any of the rest of this, maybe? Okay, well, you've definitely told me enough to the point where I have to call the police. Fuck. The police showed up and had a start from the beginning, telling them about every damning conversation we'd had with Carrie and every interaction we'd had with her sloppy drug dealing. They questioned us one by one as we all waited outside. During my questioning, our res dean turned to the cops, and in disbelief that her teacher's pet could be responsible for all this, she asked, okay, so what's the next step, guys? How do we even prove any of this? Well, we'll uh, have to post officers outside the apartment and execute a raid, said the cop, who I definitely caught looking at each of our boobs at least once. <laughs> I texted my ex, Daniel, stay away from Carrie tonight, cops coming, they're doing a raid, don't tell her. I got a reply back immediately. Whoa, dude, that's crazy. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up, Shaka. <laughs> I started to get a terrible feeling. Our res dean hated us, the cops were stupid, and Carrie was smart. We needed to take things into our own hands before they screwed this all up. You guys can go up to our room right now and find her shit. We'll take you there. There's no way she's moved it already. It was so much shit. Well, no, there's a process for this kind of thing. Aren't you guys the ones breaking into the wrong people's homes and killing them over drug raids? We're telling you she's in class and there's nobody to kill in there right now. Go find the drugs that we've been helping sell. <laughs> they laughed with the energy of Scooby-Doo holding an overzealous Scrappy back by the forehead. Then an enthusiastic radio call came through the police radio. We're moving in. The cops started running towards our apartment and we went after them. Eh, eh, I don't think so. The res dean called after us, making us stay inside and wait as we imagined all the ways the badged buffoons were gonna fuck this up. Moments later, the police officer walked back in. Well, you four either have a lot of explaining to do or today's Carrie's lucky day. He turned to the dean. We didn't find anything. 
I exploded out of my seat. What? She literally just had so much stuff. This isn't even possible. Maybe she moved it, the cop said. But for now, we can't really do anything. We were fuming red. How did she know they were coming right then? How would she even know that? Where did she even put her stuff? The dean, it being late and her being a bad person, pushed us out the door and told us to play nicely with Carrie and told us if we did anything to make her feel uncomfortable that we'd be out of housing. We should have been terrified knowing that we'd be going back to sleep under the same roof as the conniving villain with no conscience, but we were so disturbed by the injustice of it all, we didn't have any emotions left in the tank to feel fear. We walked into our living room with an existential trudge without any fight left in us. Carrie was sitting on the couch, but she seemed different. Not smug or proud, but somber and slouched. We sat in angered silence for a moment till someone broke it. Fuck you, Carrie. <laughs> I know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't stop. Her eyes were glossed over, staring at a spot in the distance. And then, in a confessional, comatose fashion, Carrie began to recount all the ways she wronged us, not just in her actions with all the drug shit, but in other sinister, more manipulative ways that we were unaware of, too. Like, you know that time I told you all I had an eating disorder? I faked it, because I knew Priya used to struggle with that, and it'd make you feel bad for me and not want to rat me out. <laughs> she smiled, and then Priya cried. <laughs> oh, and Jordan, Daniel told me you guys ratted on me, like, immediately after, because I've had him in the palm of my hand this whole year. Oh, and I fucked him, too. <laughs> now it was my turn to cry. And Carrie's turn to laugh. <laughs> Carrie was clinically, I think, a psychopath. She built her entire identity, social circle, and life around deception and playing people like pawns. She was a pure agent of chaos who took pleasure in the final act of twisting the knife before leaving someone's life forever. And then the next day, she was gone. We didn't know where to or whose life she was going to fuck up next, like a piece of human garbage just drifting through the wind. <laughs> Maybe the res dean had a change of... Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe the res dean had a change of heart and rid us of Carrie's chaos because... Even though we messed up, we were appropriately rebellious college kids that just fell into a shitty situation that she kind of put us in. And we deserve to be believed, and we deserved a good roommate, because the world is a just place. And everyone will believe my side of the story, because it's the right one. And I should get as many chances to fuck up my life as I'd like, and I should get them with impunity. We opened an email from our res dean that said we'd been assigned a new roommate today. And that if we bullied this one too, <laughs> we'd all be out of housing. Our new roommate Erica arrived in the middle of our smoke sesh. <laughs> <laughs> you want a hit? We asked her. No. Thank God. Give it up, it's Jordan Coburn!